The Los Angeles Lakers franchise is one of the most successful and influential sports franchises in the entire sports world. The Lakers have racked up more than 3,000 wins, 61 playoff appearances, 16 championships, and 29 Hall of Fame players. The Lakers are also listed in the top 10 richest sport franchises in the whole world by Forbes as they rank number 8, valued at $3.7 billion, with an operating income of $147 million. When people think of the Lakers, they think of Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaq, Wilt Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, and LeBron James. However, not many people seem to think of George Mikan and the Minneapolis Lakers. Yes, the Minneapolis Lakers, the team that preceded the move to Los Angeles. This Minneapolis team was very successful, as well as before the move, as this team would gain five championships for the franchise. But after slumping some seasons in the late 1950s, the franchise finally moved in 1960 to the warm, sunny, and economically driven city of Angels, Los Angeles. But what happened to this successful and prolific Minneapolis team, and why were they driven out? Well, let's start from the beginning. In 1947, two men named Ben Berger and Morris Chalfin purchased a sinking team called the Detroit Gems for $15,000. The Gems were in the National Basketball League, a distinct and unpopular league relative to its rival, the Basketball Association of America, which had big city teams like the New York Knicks and the Boston Celtics. Berger and Chalfin would soon relocate the team to Minneapolis. Since Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes, the owners decided to name the team the Lakers. The Minneapolis Lakers were born. However, they still needed players. Another league called the Professional Basketball League of America was dispersing, and they put their players in a draft to be selected by NBL teams. The Detroit Gems had the worst season before they transitioned into the Lakers, so they got the first pick. They selected George Mikan, a dominant 6'10 center who devastated the league before. Aside from the draft, the Lakers also picked up many former University of Minnesota players along with a Stanford All-American named Jim Pollard. The owners also brought in John Kunla, a successful college player and coach, to be the head coach of the Lakers. The Lakers were finally set up and began their first season in the NBL. The Lakers' first season was a breeze as Mikan and Pollard led the team to a 43-17 record and eventually winning the NBL championship. The league was clearly too easy for the Lakers, as they sought to join another league. The more popular and big city BAA invited them to join the league, which they did the next season. The BAA was also a breeze for them in 1949 as well, as the Lakers racked up a 44-16 season as they won the championship as well. George Mikan broke out that season as he raised 28 points per game as no one would come close to his dominance at that time. The Lakers franchise clearly had a bright future. The league the Lakers left, the NBL, was about to cease to exist as the BAA snatched up some of their teams and their popularity. However, the two leagues agreed to merge for the 1949-1950 season as the new league would be called the National Basketball Association. The NBA as we know it was born. In the 1949-1950 season, the Minneapolis Lakers dominated as usual, recording 51 wins and winning the first NBA championship. George and Mikan dominated the league as usual, scoring 27 points per game. The Lakers were clearly the best team in the league, even after obtaining a record where they lost a game 19-18, which is the lowest scoring game in NBA history. They also lost in the playoffs that season, but marked their vengeance as they rampaged the league, becoming the first team to win three NBA championships in a row. Mikan rampaged as well leading the team in league in points and rebounding year after year. The Lakers were soon to be recognized as the NBA's first dynasty, as they had already racked up five NBA championships. However, the NBA was a young and rising league, bound to make changes that would change how old school teams would soon play. After winning their three-peat championship, things started to roll downhill. In the 1954-1955 season, their star player, George Mikan, suffered injuries which kept him out of the season eventually forcing him to retire from the league. That year as well, the NBA implemented the 24-second shot clock and a six-personal foul limit per team per quarter rule, which shocked the Lakers. 
they were not used to the new play style, which negatively affected their play for the following seasons. The Lakers still made playoff appearances due to the small league, but would not win the finals again. They were desperate, as they convinced George Mikan to come out of retirement to play again. He agreed, but could only play 37 games in the 1955-1956 season, as he could not play like he used to, and his injuries were still affecting him. He would retire for good after the season. However, this wouldn't exactly be the end for Mikan. In the 1957-1958 season, George Mikan was named head coach of the Lakers, but was immediately ineffective. His team went 9-30, as he was quickly fired and replaced with John Kunla again. With Mikan gone, the excitement of Minnesota basketball drastically fell. Attendance at the Minneapolis Auditorium dropped significantly, which began the questioning of whether this franchise should stay in Minnesota. There was one more hope in 1958 as the Lakers, with their bad record, were able to select Elgin Baylor in the draft that year. Baylor was very effective for the Lakers, gaining 25 points per game, winning Rookie of the Year, making the All-Star team, and leading the team back to the finals. They would lose the finals, though. Elgin Baylor was the Lakers' last glimmer of hope, as he was very successful personally. However, the Lakers went 25-50 and 50 in the 1959-1960 season finally securing the promise that the Lakers would move. Moving franchises was not a new business strategy back in this day. For example, the Brooklyn Dodgers of Major League Baseball moved to Los Angeles, where it was clearly a financial success. Bob Short, who bought the Minneapolis Lakers in 1957, could not take the awful attendance and revenue in the Twin Cities anymore, and he could not just ignore the economic opportunity on the West Coast. Therefore, on April 28, 1960, Short announced the Minneapolis Lakers franchise would move to Los Angeles, California. The reception was great, as attendance grew from a total of 100,000 people in a season to over 500,000 by 1970, vastly outnumbering what the Twin Cities would bring into their games. The new LA team would make 14 straight playoff appearances, led by the Elgin Baylor and Jerry West duo, and along with the incoming Wilt Chamberlain. The Lakers would eventually win their first finals in Los Angeles in the 1971-1972 season, with much more success on the way. The only problem people saw in this move was how the team kept the name. The Los Angeles Lakers name would be known for decades there on after even though there are hardly any lakes in that area. The franchise will always be known for their famous legacies, such as the Baylor and West duo, the Showtime Lakers and their famous rivalry with the Celtics, the Kobe and Shaq three-peat team, and LeBron's new team. But people will forget the roots of those legacies. The power of George Mikan and the Minneapolis Lakers brought five championships to the franchise and brought fame to their future. It makes sense though why Mikan's Lakers aren't as popular as the modern Lakers. Basketball was a completely different game in the 1940s and 50s. No three-point line, no shot clock, and less flashy dunks. It just wasn't a popular game back then. The NBA was just not ready to bring in soccer, gridiron football, or baseball crowds in yet. The game needed flair, player icons, and fun until cities like Minneapolis would be interested to show loyalty to the game. George Mikan could have been this icon if it weren't for his injuries, but Mikan himself probably couldn't take on that role. It would be players like Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan that would lead the worldwide popularity of basketball in our pop culture. But just because these older teams weren't fun to watch does not mean we should forget about them. Franchises like the Minneapolis Lakers are the pioneers of basketball, and their love for the game would soon translate to nationwide and worldwide love for the game of basketball.